Coming up now on Animal Outtakes, a unique pair of conservationists are joining forces, how their ingenuity is gaining momentum and why their deep diving adventures will combat a devastating problem in our waters. Plus, we meet Coda, a curious creature who has quite the penchant for sweet potatoes. And a Suncoast animal rescue is picking up the pieces. We visit Second Chance Ranch to find out how they're getting through the post-hurricane devastation. This and much more straight ahead on Animal Outtakes. We begin this week's show with a focus on lionfish. They're an invasive species that are wreaking havoc in waters surrounding Florida and well beyond. In fact, it is said that they are the worst marine invasion in history. They're referred to as opportunistic generalists, and they prey on anything that's convenient. Lionfish can change the entire dynamic of an ecosystem. They eat species like juvenile grouper, snapper and flounder, along with crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. They also target fish who play important roles in coral reefs. They eat the algae eaters, the cleaners, and the grazers. Officials say native predators do not recognize them as prey because of their color. Humans are their only known predator. Many have worked to capture and kill this invasive species, one spear at a time. So we met up with some impassioned conservationists down in Venice, Florida, who are working hard at finding an efficient way to capture lionfish and save our reefs. I'm just starting on my adventure with the lionfish, so I'm actually thrilled to death. What we're trying to do is we're, we're going to do something that really hasn't been done before. We're, we're taking our submarine and we're going to use it to capture and harvest lionfish to remove them. So in a sense, it's an underwater fishing vessel, but it's removing an invasive species, something that really needs to be done because lionfish are an undersea forest fire. and This is basically a machine to help put out some of that fire. I run a nonprofit called Lionfish Central. We're dedicated to uh, marine conservation, coral restoration. It all goes down to a lionfish. If, if, you, if you don't remove the lionfish, you're not gonna have great marine conservation. Uh, you're not gonna have great coral restoration because they eat all the fish. Scott reached out and said, hey, I've got a submarine. You wanna attack the lionfish problem? I've dove five different subs for different manufacturers and different missions. And I always wanted to have my own sub, so I started uh, the long process of opening up a nonprofit and working with people was able to get the hull and over 10 years I was able to get it built um, so that it was a usable machine and then you know just been diving it ever since. I've, it's been diving for about 20 years now and, and almost got 2,000 dives on it. So it's been a little workhorse for me. Uh, she changes her shape and color all the time. This is quite different looking, uh, bigger pontoons for longer ocean toes but uh, same sub. We're, we're fitting the submarine to be able to go down to depths that divers can't get to, or not many divers can get to, two to 300 feet. And we're gonna search for lionfish, document them, but we're also working on a spearing system to remove them. And this is uh, our lionfish patrol submarine. Our, our job is to go out and catch larger quantities of lionfish at deeper depths, so it takes pressure off the shallow waters where there's a lot of fish breeding and small juvenile fish. You know, they are beautiful, and it's not their fault that they're here but it's gonna be all the reef fish or just lionfish. It's not just you know, the snakes in the Everglades, it's from Massachusetts down to Brazil, it's in the Mediterranean, it's all throughout the Caribbean, all throughout the Gulf, and it's really changing the, the food chain. It's, it's taking certain creatures out of the food chain, and we don't know what that is yet. Um, and the biggest challenge is the reef fish take three to five years to reproduce, Lionfish within the first year are reproducing. And they're taking out the juveniles that don't recognize the lionfish because it's a new species. So it's not in their DNA to recognize them. So they're easy prey. This sub is based on a K250, which is a submarine designed in the 70s. 
and the K250 means it's limited to 250 feet, but I did some things like I have thicker acrylic on it, I have more stiffeners in it, so it's actually rated a lot deeper than that. I take it to 500 feet, but nobody can rescue you at 500 feet, so I usually like to limit my dives to 300 feet because that's as deep as any tech diver will go um, for the most part. And uh, I got three days of life support on the sub, so I can survive for three days basically in a telephone booth, something you don't want to do, but something you can do. Um, but there's lots of systems on the sub. For every system that can fail, I have a backup. I have two electrical systems, two buoyancy systems, two ballast systems. Um, I've got two life support systems. Uh, when combined, it's 72 hours. So I've got a lot of stuff on there. You know, I've spent a lot of my life in the military and I've seen a lot of things, uh, a lot of death and destruction and stuff. Um, and I've been one of those people that is against hurting any animal. I adopt stray pets and stuff like that. I've never been one to want to eat anything from the ocean because I don't want to be a part of the problem. So I, as much as I love eating fish, I won't. I will eat lionfish because that is a species that needs to be eradicated out of this area. It's not that we can learn to live with it. We cannot learn to live with it. It needs to be wiped out. You know, I've always been involved with the ocean in some way, shape, or form. And when I learned about lionfish and I learned about, um, you know, the lack of services out there for it, the lack of information for it, uh, I realized something needed to be done. And coming from the IT world, I had some skills that were useful. So I started the nonprofit, and since that, we've developed an app. We've helped businesses and nonprofits with their websites so they can take donations and sell stuff online. We want them to succeed. Uh, we've built a video game for kids. It's a free video game and they can catch lionfish and save the reef, and it's a conservation game. Uh, we've started a podcast to get interviews from all over the country. Uh, we're working on a comic book that should be out this fall, a lionfish hunting comic book. It's, it's great representing all the countries and divers from around the country showcasing what they do. And we have our lionfish patrol sub. So if you like scuba diving, snorkeling, fishing, if you like healthy reefs, if you like healthy environments, the lionfish are the, are the problem that's gonna put that in jeopardy. You know, there's a lot of invasive species out there, but I think uh, most people will agree that lionfish are the worst uh, ecological disaster of an invasive species. The way we're gonna capture lionfish is that we're going to spear them with a, a system off the front of the sub because it's legal to spear fish, uh, lionfish you can't really do any other technique legally, so we're gonna start with that, but we'll see. We'll see how the laws evolve and what our technology evolves, and if we have a way of sucking them up very effectively, uh, that'd be better um, than spearing them, uh, but we'll see. We may have to get a law change for us to do that. The reality is you're either gonna have a ton of beautiful reef fish that are keeping a healthy reef environment, or you're gonna have unhealthy reefs filled with lionfish, and there's really no in-between. So. Unless you get involved and go diving and pluck them out one by one, you gotta spear them one by one, um, or support divers or support uh, lionfish jewelry or restaurants that are selling it, or, or support by donations. As long as you're doing something, uh, you can help make a difference. And I'm definitely infected with the lionfish bug. I wanna capture as many lionfish as possible. Not just for the fact that I can sell them and continue diving, and doing research reconnaissance of the whereabouts of the lionfish deeper than divers can see as part of our mission. But the other mission is to recover lionfish and, and get them out of the environment. It is critically important for the survival of the coral ecosystem that we do it. If you eat fish, you really need to be on board getting rid of lionfish because the lionfish are eating what you're eating now and pretty soon there's not going to be any more fish for you. It's that bad. For much more information on lionfish and how you can help, you can go to lionfishcentral.org. Coming up next on Animal Outtakes, Curious Coda. And Second Chance Ranch is picking up the pieces. How volunteers are doing what they can to build back what Hurricane Ian destroyed.
dolphin at Clearwater Marine Aquarium has an amazing tale. They're all rescues who have overcome challenges to survive and thrive. You'll be inspired by every animal story and unforgettable moments with them, including two-year-old Apollo, our newest rescue dolphin. There's something inspirational for every kid and kid at heart. Your visit directly supports the animal care and rescue efforts at Clearwater Marine Aquarium, celebrating 50 years of amazing tales. Good morning, Mr. Benson. Your breakfast is served. Ugh, time for another day in doggy paradise. I sure am one lucky pup. Mr. Benson, would you like to go out for your morning stroll? The weather is quite lovely today. That sounds wonderful. Don't mind if I do. After all that exercise, I think I'd like to lounge by the pool and maybe dip my paws in. As you wish, sir. Right this way. Ah, what a perfect day. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else but Dante's Den while Mom and Dad are away. At Dante's Den, we pride ourselves in providing the best experience for your beloved pup. Whether it be a day, a month, or a year, Dante's Den should always be at the top of your list for boarding. With an expansive campus, your dog will enjoy daily walks, pool time, and an endless supply of love. Even better, it's all under 24-7 supervision from our wonderful staff. If you're anything like us, your dog's safety and happiness come first. To learn more about Dante's Den, visit dantesden.org. Now we head to the Owl's Nest Sanctuary for Wildlife, where we meet up with a beaver who has a new lease on life. Hi, Mom's here. What are you doing? Hi, come say hi. Well, Chris, <laughs> uh, everybody should have a coda in their life. They lives. should, honestly. <laughs> and here's yours. You said he's your baby. Yeah. How did you get him? So he actually came from Pensacola. There's a rehab up there, the Northwest uh, Wildlife Sanctuary. They uh, got him, somebody illegally busted up a dam up there. Yes, we have beavers in Florida. They are up in the panhandle. Come here. And this baby was found downriver, wet and hurt. And unfortunately up there, <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you can't chew on the camera. You can't stockpile the sweet potatoes in your mouth. Just eat. Um, he actually, um, would have had nowhere to go. They don't have a setup. A beaver is with the parents close to two years. So they actually drove it down to me. He was four weeks old and um, he came and lived with me <laughs> till <laughs> about probably he's only here maybe a month and a half, two months, if that. Coda has a totally different personality where he hangs on my leg like a toddler all day. If I'm in here doing stuff, he's usually not too far away. No, and that's a beaver attitude. He's like, Mom, I don't care what you're doing. You better give me that, right? So um, he's named after, uh, it means friend in Comanche. And we can give them a life. He is not going to be releasable. There's just no way to do it without building, and hopefully Northwest Florida will somehow do this someday, without building an entire lake system that they can teach the beavers what to do with a soft release area. But. Um, for right now, he, he's our, our friend. You want to go? She's got it. Now, he is absolutely beautiful and fuzzy. And I, I, there we go. And I, I would take him to bed and cuddle him. Yeah, well, but, <laughs> I don't think my husband was going to go over that, but it came close because he was too cute. But that tail. Tell me about that tail. It almost looks like it yeah. doesn't belong to you. Right. Him. So that's obviously the beaver tail. Um, they use it to slap mud onto building dams. They also do use it as a warning when he gets playful and he's in the water. He uses it to splash me. Um, so now will he swim with you? You know, we talk about after we clean the pool, usually, I always say I'm going to go in and sit with them, but this, the water here has a ton of sulfur and iron uh. that we, uh, is okay for them, but I don't know if I'm sitting in it, but I would swim with him in a heartbeat. We'll see when the, the lake is, uh, cleaned water twice. He's going to eat that camera. <laughs> And what is also very interesting, Chris, is I'm looking at the toys in the pool and the toys that you brought oh, out. Yeah. They're really dog toys. Right. Well, believe it or not, beavers have their favorite stuffed animals. They do carry the babies, carry them around. We have pictures of him suckling on the arm of this rabbit with the <laughs> basketball he likes. You like that? Is that your bunny? He's like, no, because I just want the... 
I want food. Um, so yeah, we provide him with things that he can enjoy because he, he deserves enrichment when we're not in here. He's still living a life that he would be with mom. So we spend a lot of time in here. Everybody loves Coda. I have learned so much about them. First of all, they're just incredible in the wild. But again, people would think of him as a nuisance. Um, I just recently read an article that when St. Helens went off and destroyed all of Washington State years ago, when I was a kid, that was a big deal, the volcano. It is because beavers moved into that area and started damming the water that the only reason the environment came back. They are so incredibly important to the ecosystems. They, when they dam the waters, they may tick off some people because they don't understand it. They know exactly what they're doing to provide for changing the environment back to getting water in it. That's an intelligent animal. That's not just an animal that I raised and he's got nothing upstairs. I was not going to let him just get put down because they don't have somewhere to go with him. And that's an unfortunate choice you have to make. I, you know, sometimes they were, they knew who to reach out to. We're fortunate we have the money. We have the backing to take care of something like this for the rest of his life. He also is a, is a patient of Bush Gardens. Um, they are my vet, especially for my mammals. And so I know he's getting the best care possible. Does he need a girlfriend? I guarantee you that next year I probably end up with a second. That's why I'm blessed that um, we have Pinellas Ponds coming to help me get that get enclosure going. Believe it or not, they don't know to dam. Like we give him brows now, but he doesn't know what to do with it. It's something that he learns automatically. Again, it's instinct. So I don't have to teach him that kind of stuff. He knows what to do. And my staff adores him just as much as I do, so he is, he is our light here. The Owl's Nest Sanctuary is a nonprofit that rescues and rehabilitates injured, sick, and orphaned native wildlife. A majority of the animals they treat are released back into the wild. They cover 14 counties in Florida and are not open to the public. But if you'd like to learn more about the important work they do, you can go to Owl's Nest Sanctuary for wildlife.com. Coming up next on Animal Outtakes. We're gonna build back better and stronger and maybe have the facility that I always dreamed about. So that's the, the silver lining through all of this. After Hurricane Ian stormed through Florida, it left a path of destruction in its wake. For the Second Chance Ranch and Rescue in Duet, Florida, it destroyed 
almost everything. But despite the loss of building structures, food, cages, and more, its founder is optimistic that with the community's help, the Second Chance Ranch will be getting its own second chance. The path of the tornado went straight through our woods and all these trees are down and through the pastures. Yeah, it went, oh, they squished my double coop, chicken coop. Pretty much we lost most of our out, outdoor enclosures. They were just wiped, you can see, just wiped from the backside of the, but. Basically, we had to stay in town because we have our house 30 minutes away from here. There's, there's no livable area, you know, to, uh, on, on the property. I wasn't able to, you know, withstand the storm out here. I, if, if I could have stayed, I, I, I would have. My family would not let me. The neighbor next door had uh, sent me a message about seven. He was constantly sending me, uh, you know, check-ins because he's right next door. And he said, Cigna is like, the, there's a, I can see a little bit more light in the barn. I think we may have a little bit more damage at the end. I, I, I'm not sure because it was so bad. Nobody could even come check it. There was trees all over the road. Like we got here and I opened the gate, came in, and oh my God. it was still dark. <sighs> it's everywhere. <laughs> <sighs> and the ceilings on all the animals like everybody's in water the ceilings on cages i mean just just everything i've worked for is just gone hey guys how's everybody in here hey guys hey mr laser this is the only thing left standing is our bunny guinea pig area. <laughs> We're so blessed that most of the animals came through. We ha we've had a couple animals since, you know, that have, you know, guinea pigs and stuff that have passed from stress. I mean, stress is a huge thing. Like, like they just survived this gigantic thing. So I think we've only lost maybe one from stress. But basically this was the chinchilla room. Uh, this was our storage. This was all AC'd. Um, you know, chinchillas have to be climate controlled at 72 degrees, so they are in my house right now. Um, but you can, I mean, you can just see the, the, everything is just all, and then it's, I don't even know, I don't even think we've got lights. I mean, my fan, we have two foxes that are out. I have a reward for to try and get Kaluna back. Kato, so this is the dad. As you can see, uh, these are domestic foxes from the color that they are. His mate is, um, they actually mate forever. They mate for life. So he's really missing his mate. It was, it was absolutely devastating to see everything I worked for just, just gone. Uh, the loss of this, of the, of the stuff I had is, is a big thing. Like we had so much stuff and storage and you just, things that are just ruined from rain and weather and. What are you doing for love? Hi. 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 This is Cody, the Coda Mundi. We're 150 Animal Rescue, and uh, we have everything from domestic animals to domestic exotics like raccoons and foxes and skunks. Uh, we have bunnies and guinea pigs. We have horses and cows and goats, and I'm probably forgetting some things, pigs, that kind of thing. Miss Penny is a Juliana pig. This is uh, Squishy is a potbelly, and then these two are um, uh, Cooney Cooney pigs. We want to give them um, a temporary or forever loving home until that they're, they're placed in their forever home. So these are all domestically born raccoons that were owner give ups. I just decided when I was a little girl that I was going to run a rescue. I told my mom, my mom and dad that this is what I was going to do with my life. And so I've sunk probably close to 100 of my 100,000 of my own money, plus the three to 4,000 it takes to run this place every month. I have a carpet and tile cleaning business, and that's what funds the rescue. Yeah, you can see this stuff. We're just trying to collect things and put things in, in piles and, and everything. And Well, you can see where it came through. Like, it hit here and then peeled off the side and then down. I mean, the neighbors solve a tornado. Like, I've always done so much you know, for the community and to have all of that come back has been just a, an amazing blessing. So 
this could be seen as such a horrible disaster. I could sit and I could cry and I could be like, I don't want to do this anymore. But you know what? I honestly believe that this is God's big plan for me to get out there to everybody, everybody know who I am, this little tiny blip on the map in Duet, Florida, um, and be able to bring all of this to reality. You know, that's that's my, my main thing. That's what keeps me, you know, going and, and, and persevering. You know, hopefully we, we have contractors, you know, people that are just starting to step up that said that they would, you know, tr try and help us the best way they could. I honestly believe that God works mysterious ways and this was his way of bringing us to everybody. We're going to build back better and stronger and maybe have the facility that I always dreamed about. So that's the, the silver lining through all of this. Everybody benefits from animals. Just the therapy and the love. They are unconditional loving. They just love us. So this guy is a zebu. This is not actually, they're not actually cows. There, yes, there we go. Oh, I know. See, he likes to play on me. I know I love you. Mm, I love you so much. I honestly believe the kindest people in this world with the biggest hearts are the ones that are, are the most in tune with animals. Stay with us. There's more animal outtakes coming up next. Animal Outtakes is produced by Dante's Den Foundation, a nonprofit group dedicated to creating the best life for dogs. If you would like to learn more about Dante's Den, donate or volunteer, visit our website, dantesden.org. We hope you have fun and learned a thing or two along the way. We will be back here again next week with even more animals and some engaging encounters. Until then, thanks for watching. And then we've got the, do you, oh, it's all right. So that actually was, was born in, during the hurricane. Hey, oh, watch her. <laughs> yeah, it was born during the hurricane. It actually hatched during the hurricane. <laughs>